Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how you can make a 2D background in a 3D game. I made a little script that can automate things, so you can just define if you want to have one or multiple sprites, and then it's going to place and rotate them automatically. And with this script here you can just change the width and the distance always gets adjusted automatically, so they're always fitting perfectly together. And of course you can scale the height and so on. I think this workflow has a bunch of pretty cool advantages. So for one, it's usually going to be better for performance to draw a bunch of sprites than like 3D meshes with uh, polygons. And it's just much faster to, to make it actually. And if I want to adjust the mountains and all of that, I can just adjust the sprite a little bit and it's already done. And in my case, I made a flying game, so the player can fly up with a jetpack and I tried with the terrain tools and I made them gigantic and one after another and it just doesn't work. The player flies up and immediately realizes, no, those mountains are fake. So even though those mountains are, you know, even more fake, um, you can just easily make them so far away that the player can reach them. And in case you're wondering, isn't that really unprofessional? Do video games really do that? Yeah, they do. For example, take the Quest 2 home screen. You are standing in a 3D uh, house, but any everything in the background, that's definitely a sprite. Like those are not volumetric clouds. Those are not like high poly mountains you're looking at. And I think even the mountains in the foreground seem to be sprites because you can kind of tell when you're moving, they're not moving at all. Okay, so I went ahead and made a bunch of background images in Krita. And when you see here, I go in wrap-around mode. They can be placed next to each other and they fit seamlessly. And I made two variations and I can place them next to each other uh, quite nicely. You can see when you look at the, the outer pixels here, when I turn this on and off, the, the frame kind of stays the same right on the left and right and only the middle changes. So I can just use any of those two. Then I also made a, an environment fog that is pure white. And the only important thing here is that somewhere before you reach the top, you should be at zero opacity because obviously otherwise you get like this weird um, border in your background. And the other important thing is that on the bottom, it is pure white, like it's 100% opacity. You might actually still see I use like the the paint bucket to, to fill like the lowest lowest box with pure white and then I use the gradient tool on, on top of it. So I export that by itself. And the reason for doing that is so we can blend it nicely with the environment fog. If you don't have 100% opacity, you're just gonna see like this pretty sharp line where the background starts and it just looks weird because it's supposed to be really far in the distance. Now, of course, you might not be using environment fog for your game in Unity, and you can always lower the opacity of the, the fog uh, sprite here, or you can just like drag it down a bit so it's uh, below the ground, and then you only have like the, the top. But I think it looks quite nicely, and it's it's actually like what's happening here. Like you have the atmosphere; we are not living in a in a vacuum. There's always stuff in the air, so when you have things that are really far in the background you're just gonna have like this this atmospheric perspective is what it's called. Uh, it actually took me quite a while to get used to it when I moved to planet Earth. The first thing to do is to make sure that we're actually using 2D sprites. So when you're using the 3D template and you drag like a PNG into your folder, Unity is just going to assume you want to use it as a texture, which you probably want in almost all cases. But in this one, make sure that you go to texture type default and change it to sprite, 2D and UI. And the pivot, change it to bottom. That's just for this tutorial, it makes things a lot easier. And of course, bottom refers to the bottom center. And then you click apply, and now it's a sprite. Let's take a look at the prefab, which is really just a sprite renderer. That's all there is. Order in layer is zero, and that is actually going to matter. And parented to it is another sprite renderer, and that is our fog. And here, make sure the order in layer is one because we want to render it in front. And as I mentioned before, the color, you can easily just change the opacity here. Maybe if you want less, 
and of course you can also just move it down you know you can adjust it a bit maybe you made the fork a bit too strong and you say nah I only want it like here or something um, if you want it stronger than you did you could just uh, duplicate this right so now it's more fork and the color is actually the same color or should be the same color that we're using for our environment fork so if you go to the lighting tab in case you don't see the lighting tab you can go to window let's see rendering lighting open it up and then it should pop up and then you can anchor it on this side and then you go here lighting environment and down here you have the fog and the color and like any color field in unity you can right click and copy it then you go to our prefab meaning you have to go to the inspector again and then you right click again and you say paste and now they are the same color and they should uh, go together quite nicely Another important thing to do is to increase the clipping planes of your camera. So in my case I'm using the VR camera. So just make sure that the far one is really really big because otherwise it's not going to render your sprites. And you might be wondering isn't that really really bad for performance? And the answer is yes and no. Increasing this number in itself does not have any influence. Of course what matters is if you have lots of objects that are all the way there and now you just make sure that they're all getting rendered. <clears throat> there is a workaround. You could use two cameras and use a culling mask. So you have one camera that is only responsible for drawing the background with like this really really big uh, clipping planes and a second camera that's just your standard and then use culling mask to make sure this one doesn't render any of the other stuff. But this all heavily depends on the type of game that you're making. So if you have trouble with that, you can just leave a comment below and I will try to look at it and find a solution. Now let's take a look at the script which I attached to a game object that is just sitting right in the middle of the game world. Okay, so we have just a few serialized fields here. First is our list of prefabs. So just a list of game objects. Then we also have a list of the mountains that we already have in the scene. It doesn't have to be serialized, uh, just did that, you know, to, to see what's going on. Then we have uh, three floats, the width, the height and the distance. So the width of the sprite and the height and the distance is how far away are they going to be from the middle. Now I have a method called create mountains and this context menu that's just to allow me that I can right click here and I can say create mountains and I can trigger this method even though the game isn't running. That is very useful because all of this is going on in the editor. I assume you don't really want to do that at one time. So when we create the mountains first thing we do is we go through our list of mountains and just destroy everything that's in there. And here I'm using destroy immediate, that is for the editor. So don't use destroy in a, at one time. Uh, don't use destroy immediate at one time, use destroy. But it's actually gonna give you an error if you use it in the edit mode. So then we say mountains, just make it a new list. Then I have an integer for the prefab index and that is to make sure that if we have multiple items in this list, they're just getting like shuffled through. So you can just, if you just want one sprite, you can just put one sprite in there and it's going to work the same way. So we have the zero for the index and angle we're going to start at zero. And I hard coded this for eight sprites. So we're just gonna loop eight times and then we're gonna get our mountains list and we're going to add, well, we're going to instantiate a prefab. And the prefab we want to instantiate is the prefab index. So we get item number zero from our prefabs list. And we're going to instantiate that. Transform means we are setting the parent to whatever this game object is. And yeah, then we're adding it to this list. We're just doing it all in one line, right? Take the prefab, instantiate it, aka make an instance, and already add it to the list. And then we're going to rotate it. We're just going to grab it from that list and we're going to rotate it by this angle on the y-axis. The, the first one is zero 
and then every time this loop once this is going to increase by 45 degrees and it's 45 because 360 divided by 8 is 45 and then we're going to increase the prefab index by 1 that's this plus plus and of course now we want to make sure that we're not overshooting that we're not getting a higher index than we actually have items and so we have to make sure that if the prefab index is bigger or equal to our count then we're gonna set it back to zero so make a quick example if you have two items uh, the, the count is two but if our index is two well that's not gonna exist because two items means we have index zero and one so it's equal to means yep let's start from the beginning again and of course if you have one it's just gonna start at zero every every loop and the other method is called set mountain skate and that one is responsible for placing them far apart so what we're doing here is first we are setting the local scale of the mountain based on the width and height so we can just drag it in the inspector right and then it applies that Oh, and the reason why it does that is because I have this method here called on validate. That means every time a value changes in the inspector, it's gonna call this method. And what it's gonna call is, well, first it checks if we actually have eight mountains right now, so there are some things to do. And then it's gonna call this method, set mountain scale. So as soon as I change the width or the height, it's gonna go here and then in here, and then it's actually going to apply that to our mountain game objects. Then I'm going to get the sprite length. I'm gonna get this of the first mountain. And this is just a method in Unity. You know, get components, sprite renderer, bounce.size.x. And the good thing is, since this is running in the editor, you don't have to worry about performance. So just use get component as many times as you want. And the distance is what we're going to figure out. And we're gonna do this by this formula which probably is not very intuitive, so let me explain that in a bit more detail. And I gotta admit, I did this <clears throat> like two weeks ago, and then for the love of God, today I could not figure out how the hell I got there. So those of you familiar with some like trigonometry, I think it's trigonometry? <laughs> well, I didn't pay attention in school, I had to look it up. So this is the formula for calculating the side of a triangle if you have a 90 degree angle and both sides are the same size meaning also the other two angles are 45 degrees and I just couldn't figure out where the hell did I find this triangle here but I figured it out so this is what it looks like when we look at our mountains from the top right so we have this octagon this is the middle of course and what we're trying to figure out is this distance here and what we have is we know the the length of the sprite. That's like the sprite renderer bounce.x and then we just divide it by two. This is half of the sprite length. And the trick was to simply make those two lines here, right? If we draw a line here and here, then we have this triangle. And this is the triangle I was talking about. We have a nice 90 degree angle. And we also know this side. So we can just easily use the formula, which was like a square root of two divided by two multiplied with the length of the opposite side. And we know that because that's the sprite length. And that means now we know how long this is. And to get the distance, oh, all we have to do is like add half of our sprite width. And then we have this distance here. And so this is exactly what I'm doing here. This is the formula to figure out like the side of the triangle. So we just take sprite length and this, and then we just add like half of the sprite length. And then all I have to do is I say uh, mountain.transform.position and I say distance times mountain.transform.forward. Uh, you might remember they're all rotated already. So this one just makes it easy to say whatever direction you rotate it in, I want you to move in that direction by the distance and that's your position and now you can say right click I'm gonna say create mountains that's going to create the mountains 
it just created them at like the normal sprite size so you can see them but as soon as we change anything in here it's going to call on validate which is going to call set mountain scale and then you can just change it i choose not to do the scale height automatically because i figured maybe sometimes you want to play around a bit but of course if you want to keep the uh, everything unstretched just make it whatever you made the width and if you want different mountains or maybe just one you could say okay i'm gonna turn this just make one item here and then i have this mountain painterly where i just try to go a bit overboard in terms of uh, stylized and then i click create mountains so it destroyed those and it placed the painterly ones and once again as soon as i start scaling here you can see them popping up and of course in the end let's do a little test flight so the mountains aren't really that big i think scale is around 600 that should be fine for a game like this and so you know if i start flying the game world disappears but the backward mountains they just stay the same okay i hope you learned something if you have any feedback criticism questions or ideas on what you would like me to do a tutorial on just leave a comment below and of course subscribing to this channel and liking this video would really help me out okay this is it uh, thank you and goodbye